Hello, everybody. Um, here, going to start breaking down building thinking classrooms in mathematics and bringing um, kind of a physics or science lens to it. Um, I our board has been reading or it's doing like a summer study for this one for the math kind of focus people because of de-streaming coming in to play in Ontario, and um, I kind of started getting snippets of what thinking classrooms look like, got super excited about some of the ideas that were in here because I think it kind of builds on what I'm doing in the classroom already. So I just thought I would jump on board and thought I would break it down for you in little snippets um, as requested by um, a member of our department just to make life easier um, as we're going through and just kind of guide you through. So I just wanted to share with you some of my takeaways from the prologue because I thought it was really powerful and it had a couple of really important uh, moments for me as a reader and why I kind of jumped into this book wholeheartedly. First off was the differentiation between a student thinking versus student like mimicking. So in traditional classrooms, it's really often we would do like um, an I do, we do, you do kind of task. So we kind of scaffold our lessons so that I present something, then we work through it together, and then you do it on your own. And I have always run that in my classrooms, assuming it was a strategy that was effective because it appears to be effective because it appears the students are learning. However, um, what I've learned is actually it's completely ineffective. So in that group, once you start into the we do task, you're going to fall into kind of three different categories. About 30% of your kids are going to fall into the slacking, stalling, faking category. So that's the people, um, for example, the slackers are not even going to engage or even try. Um, we don't get as much, I find, you'll get some slackers in the 3U physics courses, but I find it later in sciences, you kind of picked to be there. So I won't see as many of the slackers, but I will definitely see the stallers and the fakers. So stallers are people that will basically do busy work in order to get out of having to actually start the work. So like, oh, I need to sharpen my pencil. Oh, I need to dig and ruffle through my backpack. Oh, I need to reorganize my desk to make sure that my space is right. Oh, let me go over and like highlight my notes to make sure I have it perfect before I attempt the problem. Um, so you, you get people that won't even jump into the problem or you'll get people that are faking it. And the fakers are the ones that are like, um, oh, I'm just going to like read my notes and make sure I really have this before I start. So about 30% of your class won't even launch. 50% of your class will mimic, which basically means they take out the other one and they take out the one they're trying to do and they try to find patterns. And then they try to basically mimic what we did and just copy patterns over. So they're not actually learning. They're just trying to pattern their way through it and copy and paste from one to the other, which isn't very effective when it comes to physics. And I find um, some sciences are similar. Some of them are not. But with physics, uh, the big difference we find between like a standard math class and a physics class is a lot of times our physics problems are not the same. So if I do an I do question and then we do a we do question, a lot of times those are not similar. Like they both use like conservation of energy, but they won't use them in the same approach or the same strategy or you want the same information. So kids aren't able to do that mimicking. So we do get a little bit of that resistance or needing to think right away, which means that you're going to get kids kind of separating into that like faking category or into that um, thinking category, depending on their comfort level. So um, I found it really interesting that so many kids just automatically, and you see it when you think about it, you're like, yeah, a lot of them do just try to pattern their way, memorize their way through the course and it frustrates you. And it's because of this, I do, we do, uh, you do piece. Um, so it's all about breaking down institutional norms and also recognizing that how you set your classroom up will make an instant impact on how your student behaves in that classroom. So if they've gotten away really well with faking so far and they walk in your classroom and it feels like a class they faked in before, then they will then fake it in that classroom. Um, and so that institutional norm comes with that, that baggage comes with them when they come into your classroom. And so in how you design that classroom, when they walk in, if it doesn't look the same, then you'll end up getting um, a different response from the students. So it can be a little uncomfortable for them if it looks different and, and new because they don't know how to act in that class, especially for those that are the stallers and the fakers and the mimickers. So anyways, uh, lots of really good yeast impact there. Got me going because that's how I teach. And so now I got to change it up. But anyways, uh, here we go.